1,800 subscribers. That's the number we just hit. I want to give a big shout out to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for helping us grow this Back to 12 podcast community. We're not done yet. We're trying to get to 2K and go into the moon from there. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech Athletics all year long right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. All right, let's jump into this Baylor game recap for Texas Tech men's basketball who just didn't show up in the second half. It's really that simple. They played a pretty solid first half, in my opinion, when you look at what Texas Tech did. Um, And then you look at the second half stats and it was night and day. You got thoroughly outclassed in every aspect of the game. You got thoroughly outcoached. You got outworked on the floor. You got out schemed. Everything you can think of, Baylor outdid it in terms of Texas Tech, right? You look at the second half breakdown. Baylor scored 51 points. Texas Tech scored 28. Baylor had 58% shooting from the field, 50% from three. They only went to the line seven times and made only three. But it doesn't matter when you shoot 50% from three. Texas Tech, on the other hand, they shot 37% from the field, 25% from three. And yeah, they shot 83% from the free throw line on six attempts. But oh, hey, they had six turnovers as well to Baylor's two, right? When you look at this Texas Tech team, What they did in the first half against Baylor was working. The problem is, is they made no adjustments whatsoever to what Baylor could potentially do to what Texas Tech was doing, right? None. Zero. Nada. Zilch. Say it in any language you want. They made zero, right? Baylor made a ton of adjustments, specifically on the defensive end, because really Devion Harmon played exceptionally well in this game, and he was getting into the painted area on the offensive end, Damn near at will in the first half. So what does Baylor do? Okay, on those pick and rolls, we're going to hedge, right? And we're going to have two guys at all times on the block. We'll figure it out from there because Texas Tech was not shooting well from three. What were they doing? They didn't care if the guy rolled to the basket. They just were preoccupied with Devion Harmon not getting into the lane and having the opportunity to go up for a layup or dish it out to three, right? So what do they do? They hedge, and they basically double the ball handler at the top of the screen. This allows KO to roll to the basket, and we'll get to KO here in a second. I'm not done. That that one is probably the most aggravating aspect of this game, but it allows Baylor to really hedge their bets here. It's basically, okay, I'm going to give you the opportunity to decide. It's not going to be an easy pass either way, but do you want to try to go to the bucket, or do you want to try to pass to the corner, Right? Texas Tech didn't either. They decided just to, oh, there's a double right here. Let's just pass right there. And it really wasn't even Devion. That was the one that making those decisions, they were taking the ball out of Devion's hands. And rightfully so. Devion Harmon was pretty damn good in Waco. 20 points on 8 of 18 shooting. Um, Let's be real. It was probably better than that. But there was just opportunities where the offense got absolutely stagnant. And he had to throw something up. I can only really think of one shot where I was scratching my head and it was on a three but it was kind of a heat check moment for him um I mean he played really well 24 rebounds two assists two steals like he played well the numbers say he played well and then you look at the plus minus and it's minus 24 it's because he was on the floor when Baylor just went on this ridiculous run in the second half and the problem is is this I've talked about it almost at nauseum this year that Texas Tech does not make adjustments. They have not played a game in the Big 12 in its totality where they have put two halves together back-to-back of quality basketball. It's that simple. And this Baylor game basically just confirmed that and then some, right? In the first half, you were in this game. It was like a four-point game at halftime. You were right there. You were playing really well. Now, you could argue Baylor wasn't playing their best. That's fine, but Texas Tech was the one impacting them. You knew it half. You needed to make adjustments, and what do you do? You make zero adjustments, and Baylor and Scott Drew and the program that they are, one of the best in the country, made a ton of adjustments, and it helps when you have a guy like Keontae George that can just absolutely get anywhere on the floor when he wants to, regardless of what Texas Tech does, but the problem is is this. They didn't even try to contain Keontae George. They made no adjustments to do it. None. And Texas Tech just let Baylor walk all over him in the second half. I mean, it's truly that simple. It was a four-point game at half. You were in this game. You were in it. And then you just, you, Baylor really decided, okay, they did, they made no adjustments at halftime. All right. We're just going to do everything we talked about. And it worked to perfection every time. (sighs) Oh. 
All right, let me know what you're most aggravated about when it comes to Texas Tech men's basketball. Is it the rebounding aspect, the lack of adjustments, this, that, and the other? Let me know. I feel like there's quite a few things you can be frustrated with, but let me know down in the comments below and answer that pinned comment below. All right, let's talk about Kevin O'Banner. Um, I'll say this. Some of what I'm about to say is partly on Kevin O'Banner, but I think it goes back to the coaching not being aware of the situation and what's going on. There is no reason on God's green earth, none whatsoever, that Kevin O'Banner should have three, uno, dos, tres, three shots in a game. Zero, none. He should have minimum 10. And he had three. He had more free throws attempted in this game than he did shot attempts. There's something wrong with that. Okay, Kevin O'Banner, like it or not, is one of your best players. There's some people on Twitter that don't like him. I don't get it personally. I get it. He's inconsistent. But listen, you're playing with the cards that you're dealt with at this point. And Kevin O'Banner has to get at least 10 shots a game. I don't care how you get them. You have to manufacture these touches out of timeouts, run certain sets. Texas Tech did none of that. Zero of it in this game, specifically in the second half. You have to get Kevin O'Banner touches if you even want to have a semblance, a semblance of an opportunity to win a Big 12 game. It's that simple for Texas Tech. And don't even get me started on the rebounding aspect of it. Give credit to Baylor and what they were doing on the glass. They did a solid job of boxing out. But again, no reason on God's green earth that Kevin O'Banner should have one rebound in the entire game. Him and Daniel Bacho. Think about this. Him and Daniel Bacho combined for three rebounds. Total, they had four turnovers. They had more turnovers than rebounds. There's a problem there. You have to figure something out. You have to make adjustments if you're Texas Tech. And they didn't. They just simply didn't. And that is the most frustrating aspect of it. Because, again, you're going to look at this score, 89-62, and you're going to say Baylor just thoroughly dominated throughout the whole game. False. Texas Tech was in this game at halftime, and those second half adjustments, well, really the lack thereof of them, really cost Texas Tech this game. Am I saying that they win the game if they make a few second half adjustments? No, but I promise you they have an opportunity to. They have a much better opportunity to um, if they make just a couple of adjustments, and they didn't. They simply didn't, and the fact that you did not get KO just even five shots in this game was lunacy. Just absolute lunacy. You have to be better when it comes to getting one of your best players' touches. You have to. I get it. Baylor was running sets in terms of defensive sets to minimize Kevin O'Banner's touches. Figure it out. Make those adjustments as I've been talking about the whole video. If you can't tell, I've already answered the pin comment for me anyway, and it's the lack of adjustments. And that goes both on the players and the coaching side, more so on the coaching side, because they're the ones that are getting paid to make those adjustments, right? And they simply aren't doing it. And I think it stop, starts at the top, and then it's a trickle-down effect. But, again, there is no reason whatsoever Kevin O'Banner should only have three shot attempts in this game. None whatsoever. I do want to say this before I get out of here. On a positive note, Jalen Tyson is the building block of the future for this program. 19 and 10. Two assists as well, one steal. This is what Texas Tech needs to go get in the portal and guys like him that can just switch all the way around, maybe not as good as him offensively, but just go get guys that can switch one through five, play really solid defense, can attack the boards and make an impact, and also can be a primary ball handler for at least small stretches of time. Right, Go get guys like him. This is what the foundation was for Texas Tech men's basketball. I, I know it sounded like a long rant in this video, and it kind of was, but you're 1-9 in the Big 12. There's no excuse for it at this point. You are what you are. Um, I think you're done getting tricked outside of that one half against Iowa State. You just haven't been very good in the Big 12, at least um, on a consistency basis. But that is what it is. Oklahoma State and Stillwater is up next for the Red Raiders. Um, 
And Mike Boykin and crew up there, they look like the, the Cowboys are going to the tournament as well. This might be a nine-bid league, and Texas Tech might be the only team out of the Big 12 not to make the NCAA tournament. Let me know down in the comments how many bids you think the Big 12 will get in the NCAA tournament. And one more time, for the latest Texas Tech news and rumors all year long, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button right here for daily Texas Tech videos on the Back to 12 podcast channel.